The winter snowfalls have been less than ideal in Ontario, and as our plane made its descent into Kamloops, British Columbia, I stared out the window, trying to predict the snow conditions on the ground. In eastern Canada, we always hear about the abundance of snow in BC, and I have ridden here many times, but this trip was different. On this trip, I wasn't going to drive up to the bottom of a mountain and ride in the powder. This time, I was taking part in a multi-day, town-to-town -town ride. This ride was in celebration of 50 years of snowmobiling in British Columbia, and several communities and clubs were joining together to create this event and tackle the challenges of this rarely used route. Unlike in the east, joining mountain towns with trails is a massive undertaking, an adventure that I was going to be a part of, much like the early gold prospectors who walked this gold rush trail in search of riches. As our group began to unload sleds for this nine day ride, I was meeting these people for the first time people who I would spend the entire next 10 days with. This was a very lively and very fun bunch of snowmobilers. They were dedicated sledders who would give me insight into the great adventures but also the many challenges that BC snowmobilers have overcome and continue to face today and in the years to come. The 50th came about uh, at last year's Spring AGM. Uh, we were all sitting around talking with uh, various clubs and stuff, and then the, the Camels Club came up with the idea of having a ride. They do it at er every year, semi-annually, from Camels to Wells, Barkerville and back. So the more we talked about it, the more we liked it, and uh, we had another couple meetings, and, and uh, everybody agreed, and we just went at her. We started. Uh, I think in uh, March last year it started, had our first meetings in June, July and, and we've been working hard at her since. Well in, uh, with BC, uh, membership is not mandatory, um, which puts us at a decidedly disadvantage compared to say Quebec and Ontario where if you're going to ride a trail you have to have a membership. Uh, we know there's about 45,000 sledders within BC, we represent about 16%. So. The funding is, is nearly not what it should be in terms of infrastructure to, or to promote infrastructure, to create more infrastructure within BC. But it's something we're pushing hard with. We work closely with government on a number of things. You know, we, we apply for a number of grants, either provincial or federal, to help us with, with our, our grooming programs and helping with us with our clubs. So that's basically where we sit right now. We're 72 clubs strong. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a really tight-knit community, but uh, increasing our membership is definitely what we need to, uh, to need to promote to help build the sport a little bit more in BC. We don't have the funding available at the provincial level to offer to the clubs, so it's up to the clubs to, under their own volunteer effort, to go work with local government officials to get any type of funding they can to put up uh, put up signage and, and work with uh, you know work with keeping the trail system going. Our biggest challenge when I took over uh, was uh, we had some significant financial problems. Uh, we needed to streamline what we were doing a little bit better, which we achieved. We also had two provincial associations at one time. Um, there had been a split about eight years previous, and there was uh, there was uh, a challenge there to bring all the clubs together. So. We work together with, you know, I, I won't take all the credit with it, by no means that was on me. We had a great team on both sides and we worked really hard to get it together. So now we're all under one umbrella, all 72 clubs working together. And this ride is a good culmination of that because it's the clubs right across the board that are involved in it. And there's no way this ride would have been able to happen if we wouldn't have had the support and uh, cooperation of everybody working together. There had been previous provincial rides. Uh, there was rides called Rendezvous. I think the last one was back in 1997. So the fact that we can pull off a ride like this, you know, starting from Kamloops and up to uh, Wells, Barkerville and back, 
is, is a great culmination of the effort of a lot of clubs, a lot of people, a lot of volunteer time. And again, it would not have happened if we weren't able to put both associations together to make it happen. I was so stoked to come on this ride. Uh, I come from Pembroke, Ontario, and being able to ride a trail system that would take you uh, from community to community. Uh, being 47 now, I wanted to have that opportunity here. It's definitely been an eye-opener to the struggles, but it's been an eye-opening eye -opening to the communities, uh, the generosity of those clubs within those communities. Um, and you can see how the money we dropped in every community would be big for them. So we need to develop this within, within British Columbia. Uh, I know government really wants to see uh, inter-community trails developed within British Columbia, much like we see in Ontario and Quebec. Uh, my vice president role right now, I've kind of been sitting back wondering what is the next step when I become president. Um, clearly, we need to have government's eyes open to how difficult it is for tourism and to raise tourism dollars for these little communities. Uh, getting people to and from the trail system and into their restaurants and into their hotels as we've all experienced uh, changing carbides and skis that in the nighttime just to travel on those roads. So if we're going to develop that as a tourism industry in this province, we need to get the government's eyes open to how to, to the struggles we've gone through in this past week. Yeah, I mean, we've got a guy riding here who's from Sudbury. Came here to do this ride with his son. That's, that's, I mean, that's what snowmobiling does. Like for me, it's all about family, communities, um, and sticking up for each other. In the snowmobiling world, that's what they do. They stick up for each other. The tragedy in McBride, you know, I know the young man did an interview for Global TV, Rodney Welton, and my heart just grieved for that man. And uh, trying to deal with uh, all the media and, uh, and families and, and visitors, and at the same time realize that, you know, I know tragedies happen, a lot of people say, well, why do you continue to do what you do? Well, a lot of it is the camaraderie, the friendships that we've built out on the hill, out on the trail, around a campfire, eating a hot dog. Um, that's a big part of it. It's not just about riding a snowmobile, it's about all the other stuff and the laughs that happen with it. I would just like to say that uh, going forward, what we've seen here is proven to us as the BCSF that this is something that is doable in the province of British Columbia. The mountains have certainly drawn tourists into our communities. Um, that's a drawing card that's there. We want to see other people come uh, that, that don't necessarily want to ride the mountains. They want to come and they want to do this intercity, intercommunity thing and, and ride a trail system. That has to be developed for British Columbia so that we can see businesses thrive, small family businesses like we've seen today. The other thing I'd like to say is uh, just an outpouring of thanks to every club along the way that has put so much into uh, making this a, a great ride for us. We've made friends all along the way. Everybody's, uh, you know, happy and high-fiving and having laughs back at the, at the restaurants at night and it's been just fantastic for me. Throughout this eight-day adventure, we've seen a lot of different riding conditions from some pretty bare, some pretty tough-looking trails to some absolutely phenomenal powder riding. Every once in a while, I get to put down the camera gear and go for a ride like I got to do today on the HDR 800. <laughs> I'm not in this. You're naked. <laughs> ride has been awesome. Um, yesterday we had an epic sunny day all day. It was excellent. Um, got beautiful pictures. Um, yeah, and, and town to town and all these neat little rustic places that we've stayed at and bars and all that stuff. It's been a great, great time. 
certain conditions that we've had during this trip, um, you want, would want a different sled, obviously. Um, today we were on Yanks and, and of course you want a mountain sled to play in the snow. So yeah, no, it's, it's really good to be able to try all the sleds. And, you know, wide ski stands, narrow ski stands, long track, short track, uh, you know, a wider front end, better in the bumps. Um, yeah, you get to try all that stuff. Obviously, this long of a ride, you get to figure out what things can go wrong on a long trip like this um, and uh, try and make it better so that you can tell people what could go wrong if they do decide to do a trip like this. Well, at least then I can, I can distinguish with what type of riding they're going to do and, and then figure out what sled I should be pointing them towards. They're coming to a place with 154 years of history on 154 horses of power. Welcome to Barkerville. <laughs> so Barkerville is a gold rush town that sprang up in the mid-1800s, 1862, around a major gold strike from Billy Barker, who came from England. 4,600 people um, at its peak, and it, after the 1800s gold rush, um, it, the population died down a little bit until another gold rush um, came in the 30s in nearby wells, and then there was a bit more action in placer mining again. And in 1958, the province declared it the National Historic Site of Canada. Yes, yeah, there's a few replica buildings on site, but most of the buildings are original buildings. club to another. What's it like is we've handed off the ride to other clubs and they've been the host club? Um, it actually has been going really really smoothly. Like the clubs have all been coordinating together where, where each each other are going to meet. Uh, we did it something similar uh, where when the Merritt Club did it years ago so I, I, it, it really as a rider in the back of the pack or part of the pack you really never notice the transition from one, one leader to the other. It was actually quite smooth. Yeah because this trail is unique in being that it's an interconnect trail. For us it, it takes a lot of coordination. Um, our trails are a little more rustic so we had to arrange with all seven snowmobile clubs along the route to make sure that we had guides for each leg of the route uh, and the BCSF was part of that organization but this ride was basically organized by those clubs where we were just the, the, the organizer to make it happen but if without those clubs we could have never made this ride. Yeah, so day one, the ride went from Kamloops to the Green Lake Snowmobile Club Clubhouse. Uh, day two, we went from the Green Lake Snowmobile Club to the 108 Resort, so that was just north of Hundred Mile. Day three, we went from the 108 Resort to Likely, BC. And day four, we went from Likely, BC up to Wells Barkerville. And the reason that those destinations were chose, uh, we, were, we were only able to do so many kilometers in a day, so we tried to break the ride up so that it was a comfortable distance. I know in Ontario and Quebec they do 300 plus kilometers in an afternoon. To do 150 kilometers in BC is a full eight hour day. So we had to really break it up. In BC we're not able to cross roads uh, the way you are in other provinces and we're not allowed to travel down roads uh, without special permitting. So this ride was a, usually you go to your local RCMP station and you pull a permit for an area you're riding in. You have to do that in person with your driver's license. Because we were accessing the whole trail on snowmobiles, we weren't able to use that permitting system. So we actually had to pull a special events permit and able to allow us to cross roads, to access up logging roads and things that we had to do on this trail. This is, the Gold Rush Snowmobile Trail is in legislation and sections for some of these crossings, but it was a lot of 
permits to be able to do this ride. The groomer always returns to the same place because they go up the hill, they get to the emergency shelter, and they come back down, and that is the only trail. So uh, when you compare kilometers of trail with other provinces, we have a very few kilometers of trail because we just access alpine above the trees and then ride above the trees and there's no uh, trail. So our trails are very short. We just go up to the chalet and then back down. Yeah, the chalets are actually emergency shelters. So there's always wood, wood stoves, food, emergency uh, supplies, first aid, all those things in those shelters because if you ever get stranded on the hill, you know that you can always go back to that emergency shelter and be safe and warm for the night. Anybody coming out, even if it's not really severe avalanche terrain or big, big terrain, they, they should seriously consider taking avalanche skills training level one, bare minimum. Uh, anybody that's had it should consider taking uh, a refresher course, like a companion rescue course every couple of years. Keeps people fresh. Things change regularly, um, even in the, in the few years that I've been uh, in the avalanche industry. Uh, it is uh, amazing the changes that take place because of new technology, etc and uh, especially have a beacon, probe and shovel with you all the time in a backpack, not on your snowmobile. Yeah, I'm from the BC Snowmobile Federation. We've been working really hard with Avalanche Canada to educate snowmobilers. Uh, snowmobilers have taken more avalanche courses than any other uh, user group. Uh, it's still on the rise while other user groups are still going down. Um, everybody on this ride showed up with the right gear, the right training. It, it was. Uh, we see less and less people in the backcountry that don't know, have the equipment or know how to use it. I would say that it's, uh, it's the norm now that, uh, that people have that. If you talk to anyone in the world, BC is on their bucket list of places they want to ride. BC has a huge untapped potential for tourism. Uh, our inability to connect towns changed our tourism focus a little bit, but it is a $867 million industry in BC and some of these uh, smaller towns are working to get themselves on the map. Uh, we're here in Wells Barkerville. Uh, snowmobile tourism is their primary tourism in the winter. If you head down to Valmont, Sycamus, Revelstoke, Golden, those towns exist in the winter because of snowmobiling. With the trip winding down, it was interesting to see the towns and points of interest on the return trip, places that were unknown to me just one week earlier. As the trip concluded and we loaded the sleds on the trailers, I had gained an insight into the challenges of this powder province and also made many new friendships that I know will carry on for many years and for many more adventures. <laughs> hey, look, still recording. <laughs> Yeah, it's still recording. Thank you. You're welcome. Go team. Still recording. <laughs>